This is a third year chemical engineering student. She's worried about her chances of getting an internship and is wondering if there are any skills she can learn in her free time to make her a better candidate. And as a recent chemical engineering graduate, this is a question that I ask myself often. What are those top skills that I need to improve myself and become a better candidate. Luckily for us, hundreds of seasoned engineers with years of experience working in various industries replied to her post. They offered up advice on what they would learn if they were in our positions. Now this is something that I wish they told us when we were in year one, year two of chemical engineering. What are the skills that we actually need to know to be effective chemical engineers? This is just stuff they don't teach you in school. So before we get into the video, please make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more chemical engineering content. I make this stuff on a as needs basis. So if you have any suggestions for more content you wanna see, leave those suggestions down in the comment section below. So first up on our list is process control. So in process control class, we learn about the process control strategies that are used to keep plants running safely and optimally. This is a skill that's needed for any type of chemical engineer. However, if you get really specialized in this field, you could go for roles such as automation engineers or electrical and instrumentation engineers. Automation is a key skill that is needed at every single plant within the world. Now process control encompasses many skills, some of which include designing control strategies in piping and instrumentation diagrams, specifying purchasing and testing of instrumentation, designing human machine interfaces, which is basically those computer screens that you see operators looking at in the plant, as well as actually programming the logic into the industrial computers that are used to control the systems and processes around the plant. So Simulink is one of those softwares within the MATLAB suite that allows you to actually design and test out different process control strategies. Now we do learn a little bit of Simulink within school, but if you want a refresher course that is project-based, and takes you from beginner all the way to expert in Simulink, I highly suggest you check out this course. The course instructor has a PhD in mechanical engineering, and I really like this course because it's structured based on projects, which you can actually put on your resume after you complete them. Now, many universities actually offer MATLAB and Simulink for free. However, if your university doesn't have it, you can actually purchase a student license for $100. Alternatively, there are some open source versions of MATLAB and Simulink, such as Scilab or Octave. Another key skill in process control is learning about PLCs, which are programmable logic controllers. I'll leave a link in the description to another course that covers the basics of PLC. Within programmable logic controllers, you use a type of coding called ladder logic. In this course, you learn about all the fundamentals of PLCs, HMIs, and all the other stuff that is needed to be a controls engineer. I remember back then in undergrad when I had an interview with an oil and gas company, I was asked the following question, how do you stay up to date in industry news? And I didn't really have a great answer for that question. The truth is the chemical engineering industry is constantly changing. So if you wanna get updated on the latest industry trends, new companies starting up, new projects starting up, I highly suggest you sign up for the column newsletter. It's completely free to sign up. So there's literally no downside to signing up for the newsletter. And I'll leave a description down below if you wanna check it out. More than half of the comments within this thread were related to learning MATLAB or Python or SQL. So I've referenced the 10 hour data analysis course a couple of times on this channel and and this is just one way to gain some proficiency on using Python. Python and MATLAB kind of do similar things. However, Python is an open source coding language, which means that your company in the future won't have to buy it. Whereas MATLAB is a paid license, so some companies may not choose to do that. One of the things that really stopped me from learning how to code was not knowing which coding language was the best one to learn. And looking back at it now, this is something that really stops me from getting good at coding. The coding fundamentals from language to language don't really change like you have your arrays your for loops and really just the syntax changes the coding fundamentals stay the same so i suggest you just learn one my matlab python sql learn it all it's all going to be good and beneficial for you and and you can't really predict which one you're going to use in your future job but python and matlab will give you a pretty firm footing no matter which type of coding language is expected of you. So I will also leave some links in the description to learn MATLAB for free, um, as well as Python. Lean Sigma 6 is a certification that is well respected among manufacturing industries. It teaches you the fundamentals of increasing efficiencies and eliminating waste within the workplace. Similar to martial arts, it even has belts uh, with colors signifying how proficient you are at Lean Sigma 6. Now learning Lean Sigma 6 is a little bit more complicated and cost prohibitive. So you could sign 
sign up for a course, hopefully sponsored by your company, or if you're not currently employed, you could learn it on your own through your university, um, but you might have to put down a significant cash investment to get that certification. So for university students looking to get that first internship experience, one way to do that could be through getting research experience with one of your university professors. Professors generally take on one or two or even up to five students every year to assist them in their research. And you can kind of reverse engineer the type of research that you could get involved in based on the industry that you want to get into in the future. For example, let's say you want to get a job at Tesla in the future. Well, then you could reverse engineer that by getting involved with professors who are working on batteries or fuel cells even to just kind of get relevant experience that could help you down the line when you're applying for jobs within the battery industry. At the beginning of the semester, try to introduce yourself to all your professors, either during office hours or after class, because I even heard a story of a guy who just started talking to his professor one day, not even with the intention of getting an internship position with them. And from talking to the professor, he realized that he was super interested in his research. There's also usually a research page on your university website where you can actually read into what your professors are doing. In my experience, professors are usually super swamped with emails and they're super, super busy. So it's hard to get a hold of them through email. So getting that face to face where they can actually not only meet you, but also remember what you look like can give you a really good edge when later down the line you might you know, send them an email asking them if they have any research positions available. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my top skills for chemical engineers to learn. I'll link it somewhere up here or something, but I also mention a couple of other different things in that video as well. Additionally, I'll leave a link to a Google form where you can request any sort of topic that you want. Once again, if you enjoy the videos, please make sure to give the video a like. It really does help out the channel. It helps me to make out more of this content for you guys. It really does take a lot of time to research these videos out, film and edit. So every like is really, really appreciated. And with that being said, I hope this helps you out. Um, go learn some stuff. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you next week.